What can fly, has tentacles, can outthink the smartest wizard, and can spit a 120 foot long barrage of tadpoles at you? Well, an elder brain dragon, of course. So, a bit of background to get things rolling. On its own, the elder brain is quite possibly one of the most terrifying creatures to inhabit the expansive realms of Dungeons and Dragons. With incredible psychic powers, the ability to produce mind flayer spawning larvae, and the sheer will to dominate all life, these crafty craniums are no joke and can easily put a stop to all but the most well-prepared of parties. The major downside to the Elder Brain is its lack of mobility, and while they can get about via teleportation, well, and a slow, ponderous hover, they are pretty easy to get away from, or catch up to given the right circumstances. But what if, by some vulgar miracle, you were able to remove this mobility caveat? Well, thankfully, nothing like that exists. Ah, yeah, right. Well, now your nightmares can be plagued by an even more horrific monster. Let me introduce you to the Elder Brain Dragon. This malignant monster comes into being when an Elder Brain manages to get hold of a dragon and forces it to undergo a parasitic symbiosis that blends the two together, creating, quite possibly, the most horrific monster in the entirety of Dungeons & Dragons. Once a dragon has been secured and subdued, most likely by a large group of mind flayers, the Elder Brain takes over the dragon in its entirety entirety, converting all of its functions to become beneficial to its new master. The Elder Brain crawls onto the back of the now helpless dragon, using its tentacles to probe and pry into the brain of its draconic victim, taking over its mind with a bombardment of psychic energy, eventually converting the body and brain with an alternate form of ceramorphosis. The benefits that this has for the Elder Brain are truly gargantuan, and the sheer scale of the power increase on display is staggering. The Elder Brain essentially merges its powers over the mind with the dragon's physical attributes, giving it a 27 in strength, 13 dexterity, 25 constitution, 21 intellect, 19 wisdom, and 24 in charisma. These stats are backed up by some whopping saving throws, with plus 11 to whiz, plus 12 to int, and plus 14 to both con and charisma. The Elder Brain Dragon also enjoys several marked skill proficiencies, with plus 12 for arcana, and a humongous plus 18 for both insight and perception. As you may have guessed, the Elder Brain Dragon is immune to psychic damage, as well as the charmed and frightened conditions. Ability-wise, this behemoth comes packaged with four uses of its legendary resistance per day, blind sight up to 120 feet, a staggering 28 passive perception, is considered a siege monster, doubling its damage against objects and structures, and it doesn't require sleep or breathable air due to its unusual nature. With all this in mind, you may be wondering why the Elder Brain Dragon does not possess all of the abilities that it previously had as a mere Elder Brain, especially considering it seems to have inherited most of the Draconic side's features. There are three main abilities missing from the stat block that the standalone Elder Brain benefits from. Those abilities are Creature Sense, which allows an Elder Brain to be aware of all creatures with intelligence 4 or higher within a 5 mile radius of itself, providing those creatures are not under the effects of a mind blank spell, non-detection spell, or another ability of a similar nature. Magic Resistance which does what it says on the tin, granting advantage on saving throws against spells and magical effects, and Telepathic Hub coming in last. This one grants the Elder Brain the capability to connect up to 10 creatures at a time with its telepathy, enabling these creatures to participate in psychic communication. Now, each of these abilities rely heavily upon the Elder Brain's psychic powers, and I think the most obvious way of explaining away the lack of these features in the Elder Brain Dragon is to consider just how much energy it takes the Elder Brain to pilot its dragon captive. This, of course, is entirely up to the DM, and some may choose to make this enemy a little bit more ferocious than it already is by including some of these lost features. But even as it stands, the Elder Brain Dragon absolutely dwarfs the standalone Elder Brain in terms of deadliness. And when comparing the two creatures, you can really start to see the differences. Where the Elder Brain previously fell down in terms of mobility and physical defense, the freshly acquired Draconic Biology significantly quashes any concerns that were previously there, making this monster truly and 
absolutely lethal. If you are unfortunate enough to find yourself engaged in combat with an Elder Brain Dragon, you will very quickly find out that, despite this aberration's monstrous appearance, it is incredibly well versed in the art of war. And with a brain that runs at unimaginable speeds, the chances are that it will be able to think its way around most strategies in order to emerge victorious. If its incredible brain power wasn't enough, as we well know, the Elder Brain Dragon backs itself with immense physical prowess and will use its new bulk to its advantage. The first thing the Elder Brain Dragon is likely to do upon the initiation of combat is to unleash its breath weapon attack. Now, this is no ordinary breath weapon attack, as even this most sacred of draconic abilities finds itself altered under the thrall of the Elder Brain. In place of unleashing a barrage of elemental energy, the Elder Brain Dragon spews forth a 120 foot long by 15 feet wide deluge of tadpole infested brine. This attack deals 55 or 10d10 psychic kick damage on a failed save, or half of that on a successful one. This spray also infests anyone caught in the splash zone with tadpoles, whether they succeed their saving throw or not. Succeeding on the DC 22 constitution saving throw does at least reduce the damage dealt by half, but this is a small victory when you're still being eaten alive by tiny illithid parasites. Talking about the parasitic tadpoles, these little buggers deal 16 or 3d10 psychic damage at the start of an infested creature's turn. To end the infestation, an afflicted creature can repeat the constitution saving throw at the start of each of their turns, ending the effects after three successes. Now, as a little house rule, if the creature succeeds on the first saving throw, I do like to count this one, but of course, as always, this is up to your DM's discretion. Another way to implement tadpole pest control is to have the inflicted creature be targeted with magic that ends a curse or restores 40 hit points or more. This immediately kills the tads and nullifies any of their effects. In the unfortunate event that a humanoid drops to zero hit points while infested, they drop down unconscious, remaining in a stable state for six D12 hours. When this period of time comes to an end, the creature rises back up as a mind flayer, having undergone ceramorphosis. And the only way to stop this is through the casting of a wish spell, or by killing them before the changes happen, of course. This terrifying breath weapon recharges on a roll of five or higher on a d6, and the Elder Brain Dragon can make this replenish roll at the start of each of its turns. If it does succeed on the recharge, it is more than likely to make use of this attack every single time it becomes available, as the potency of this disgusting ability is simply too much to ignore. Outside of the breath weapon, the Elder Brain Dragon is able to make use of even more draconically inherited abilities, using its claws and bite attacks to deadly effect, while also flailing and lashing at foes with its tentacles. These attacks dish out a varying amount of damage, with the claws hitting for Amiga 11, or 1d6 plus 8 slashing damage, the bite attack chomps down for a far more substantial 19, or 2d10 plus 8 piercing damage, plus 11, or 2d10 psychic damage, for an average total of 30 damage per hit. And last but not least are the tentacles, which deal 12 or 1d8 plus 8 psychic damage. Any creature hit by this attack must also make a DC 18 strength or dexterity saving throw, or become grappled. The Elder Brain Dragon can grapple up to four huge or smaller creatures at any one time. Each round in combat, the Elder Brain Dragon can take advantage of its multi-attack to make one bite attack, one tentacle attack, and two claw attacks. As well as its physical potency, the Elder Brain Dragon also also has its psychic dominance to flex, with its Shatter Concentration legendary ability being one of the most devastating anti-caster abilities out there. For the cost of two of its three per turn legendary actions, the Elder Brain Dragon can use Shatter Concentration on a creature that it is grappling. The target's concentration on a spell or ability immediately ends, and the target takes 19 or 3d12 psychic damage for the pleasure. In combat, the Elder Brain Dragon is destructive to its core, and will use its bulk in combination with its existing intelligence and psychic prowess to unleash all hell on its opponents. Starting off, the Elder Brain Dragon will find a strategic location that allows it to cover as many targets as possible with its brine breath. 
It will use its 80 feet flight speed, if required, to establish the perfect angle, performing a flyover if necessary to achieve the optimum combat position. Following on from this, it will use its tentacles in an attempt to grapple as many opposing creatures as possible, most likely favouring to target any enemies that are concentrating on spells. It will then use its remaining bite and claw attacks to push back against any enemies that remain unrestrained, keeping them at bay in order to delay any attempts made to rescue the victims of its tentacles grapple. If it has any movement speed left after doing all of this, the Elder Brain Dragon is likely to make use of its ability to hover, taking to the air once again, pulling any grappled targets with it, and removing the threat from any melee combatants. The Elder Brain Dragon will finish combat by using its legendary Shatter Concentration ability to rip a grappled magic user away from its concentrated spell or ability. This of course leaves one legendary action left over, which the cunning creature will likely hold onto for strategic use. This legendary action can be used to make a tentacle attack, so keeping one free will keep any aggressors on their toes, knowing that this potent attack could come for them at any time. The Elder Brain Dragon will continue this attack pattern throughout the combat, making situational use of its legendary resistance when necessary. If the Elder Brain Dragon regenerates its breath weapon attack, it will always find the most strategic position and blast away. If it does not regenerate this potent weapon, then it will make do with continuing to chip away at its attackers, grappling as many targets as possible before unleashing its bite and claw attacks, followed by a hasty retreat out of melee range back into the air. An Elder Brain is cunning and remains so in its new Elder Brain Dragon form. If by some miracle your party is able to bring the beast low, the Elder Brain Dragon will make use of its newfound mobility to attempt an escape if that is at all possible. An Elder Brain Dragon confronted out in the open is extremely likely to flee back to its lair, whereas one battled within its lair will have less chance to escape, and will thus fight with all the ferocity it can muster, till only one party remains standing. But where and why exactly would you encounter an Elder Brain Dragon? Your party could catch wind of a dragon that has recently been captured by a group of illithids, and you decide it would be best to investigate this story further, only to arrive at the site of the capture to reveal an Elder Brain has completed the domination process, spawning an Elder Brain Dragon, which is now standing between yourselves and freedom. An Elder Brain Dragon could be unleashing an assault on a nearby village, with the aim of converting its hapless populace into a roaming band of mind flayers. This, of course, cannot be allowed to continue, but raises several moral issues issues in the process. You must of course eliminate the Elder Brain Dragon, but what to do with the infected populace the menace has left behind? Or perhaps another dragon has noticed that one of its fellows has gone missing, and having dealt with your party in the past, it trusts you above all others to investigate this happening. Having conducted your search, your party may find that the dragon has indeed been captured by illithids, but they are yet to return the defeated creature to their lair for conversion. The choice is yours. You can either stay and battle the Mind Flayers for custody of the captured dragon, or return to your employer to report the news in the hope that they will join you on the rescue mission. Either way, time is of the essence, and choosing the wrong path could spell disaster for both the dragon involved and the greater region in general. However you encounter one, the Elder Brain Dragon is a hulking monster that combines brains and brawn into the ultimate package. Lump that in with bizarre alien illithid biology, and you have a monster that can prove truly memorable, whether as a triumphantly slain centerpiece boss monster, or as a party-wiping weapon of mass destruction that could potentially even impact the world at large. As always, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed learning about the Elder Brain Dragon and the incredible amount of drama and chaos that they can bring to the tabletop. If you enjoyed this video, then perhaps a feature on the equally alien Alhoon could be your next watch. Or perhaps a more devilish foe such as the Baylor has more to offer.